Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening hymn for tonight is hymn number five. Hymn number five.
Lord God, your word continues to bring many to eternal life and to Jesus our Savior. Help us to set your word as a priority in our lives and to confess it as long as we live. We ask this in the name of our Savior Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Fourteenth week in Pentecost, the lessons for this week continue. Uh, will remind us that we do have choices. And Joshua, in our Old Testament lesson, sets that before the people. And there's also other choices uh, regarding God and His Word. So, uh, serve the Lord in Him only. Serve the Lord in Him only. So, our Old Testament lesson for this evening is Joshua chapter 24, beginning at the fourth fir first verse. This is Joshua's, uh, some of his last words to the Israelites uh, before he dies. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes at, of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. Long ago, your forefathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived, in the river, lived beyond the river and worshipped other gods. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people will answer, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord and to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God ourself, himself who brought us and our fathers up out of Egypt, from that land of slavery, and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. Our psalm for the day is taken from portions of Psalm 119. We begin by singing the refrain. church, 
without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Here ends our epistle lesson. We join together in the song response. Mm -hmm.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Text for meditation this evening are the very uh, last three verses of our gospel lesson for this evening. John 6, beginning at verse 66. From this time, many of Jesus' disciples turned back, turned away, and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave me too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go away to? You have the words of eternal life. These are the words of our Lord. In the name of our Savior, uh, dear Christian friends, uh, I generally try to watch both uh, conventions, political conventions in its entirety, pretty much start around 7 o'clock and run all the way uh, to the end, to the benediction at the end. And you can't watch network news or PBS, you got to watch on a C-SPAN so you just get the whole deal yourself and not all the editorial comments. And, and so, you know, this last week, the Democratic uh, Convention in Chicago, and um, it's interesting, both conventions this uh, year uh, tried to highlight people from the other party who decided we can no longer vote for that candidate, we're going to vote for the other party's candidate. Both conventions did this. And uh, now, it wasn't completely the same way in our text for tonight because there was nobody around saying, hey, don't follow after Jesus, uh, follow after this person, you know. But it's uh, definitely something that was going on here in John chapter 6 after all the people. Well, many of his disciples declared, this is a hard saying, this are hard words, this is hard teaching, who can accept it? And then we hear many of them no longer follow Jesus. And so tonight, our text for this evening, uh, we use the words of this excellent confession of Peter, uh, Lord, to whom shall we go after to? Lord, to whom shall we go? And there's nobody else, and there's nothing else. In other words, remain with the Lord Jesus and with his words of life eternal. Remain with the Lord Jesus and with his words of life eternal. It's kind of interesting. Um, now, when we've been reading John chapter 6 for at least the last month in our gospel lessons, as we're reading through these gospel lessons, I don't think any of us could say, well, this is really easy stuff that Jesus is teaching. It's, it's at times, as the people said, difficult words. And yet, notice, the words I speak are spirit and they are life. So, they're not always easy to understand uh, with our limited human uh, thinking. So, because of that, at times, people and even we may be tempted uh, to go away from Jesus. Uh, in our Old Testament lesson, we have this excellent example of Joshua. Joshua is the one who picked it up from Moses. The Lord appointed Joshua after Moses had led the Israelites out of Egypt and then through the wilderness for those 40 years, right to the border of Canaan, the Promised Land. And then Joshua took over after Moses died. And now you're at the end of Joshua's life, and a great uh, part of the Promised Land has been conquered. Israel has been settled in the Promised Land. And then he puts that choice in front of them. Now choose this day whom you will follow. Either those gods that were in Egypt, the gods beyond the river, that Terah and your forefathers worshipped, or serve the Lord. The Bible tells us that during the lifetime of Joshua, the Israelites did serve the Lord. And so during the time of Joshua and the leaders and the elders of Israel, they set the good example the people followed. And then those excellent words of Joshua. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And then in our epistle lesson for this evening, uh, the apostle in this letter to the church in Ephesus uh, reminds them of God's blessings that he gives to us in marriage. And he reminds us of the duties, the responsibilities, that a husband and a wife. And notice God says marriage is a man and a woman, a husband and a wife. That's it. And then he reminds uh, us 
of the duties and responsibilities and the blessings that we have in marriage. So wives, husbands, do this and that. Now, people have decided that they don't want to listen to what God says about marriage, right? And many people go away from uh, the things that God teaches in his word that marriage is and consists of. And notice that one of the bonding things in marriage is love, as our Lord teaches us. And love in such a way that husbands are to pattern their love as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. So these words about marriage, which are still part of the words of eternal life and part of God's wisdom given to us, they're still rejected today by people who don't want to listen to God's words. And then in our gospel lesson, notice we hear that the people say, this is a hard saying, who can accept it? Now what about for us today? How do we apply these words to ourselves? Well, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthians reminds us to take warning because the Israelites, they fell away and then the people walked away from Jesus during his ministry and didn't follow him any longer. And then during the time of the apostles, it's recorded in the, some of the epistles and things like that, how some of the people decided, well, we're not following the apostles anymore in their teaching. So will it be any different in our day and age today too? And there will be people who will decide for whatever reason. And sometimes, you know, walking away from Jesus sometimes isn't always over teaching. Sometimes it's over other stuff, silly stuff. Somebody gets offended. Something was said at church, and they're not going back. And sometimes it is over teachings and the like. And, you know, we can say, oh, that's a hard saying. One of the applications for us as close members is a, a close communion. Over the years, many people have been uh, offended over that, that, what do you mean, we can't have communion, and things like that. So sometimes it's difficult. Now, what would it take for us? What would it take for us uh, to say, uh, I'm done with this? Now, I think if we're presented with that question, most of us would kind of blow that off and say, that, nah, that's never going to happen. But then look at one of the apostles. I'll never go away from you. I'll never depart from you. Never, right? And then what happened? Pressure came on and boom, uh, he sinned. So is it any wonder the apostle Paul wrote, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. So when we see some of these bad examples of people walking away from God or walking away from Jesus, we should take it to heart and continue to be very careful. Now, notice that Jesus has this question. He has this question for his 12 disciples. And he says, you do not want to leave me too, do you? Now, I think this question is very similar uh, to the question that Jesus asked of his disciples when he was about to feed the 5,000. And the Bible tells us that right before he fed the 5,000, that Jesus asked his disciples, where are we going to get food to feed all these people? And then John's Gospel says Jesus was asking this to test them because he already knew what he was going to do. And no, notice Jesus, who knows all things, asks his disciples, you do not wish to leave me too, do you? And he's giving an opportunity to hear this awesome confession that we hear from here. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Now, there's a couple of things that we should look at here, and, and that is this. Only our Lord, only Jesus, has words of eternal life. Only Jesus has words of eternal life. Which is reflected in Peter's question, uh, question back. Lord, to whom shall we go away to? You know, I was watching a convention uh, the night before uh, church at Sugar Island, the benediction, well, there were two people giving the benediction. It wasn't much of a benediction. And it was pretty, in fact, it was downright, downright miserable. A Sikh, a Buddhist, well, Hindu, 
a Sikh, a Hindu, and an Anglo. I've never heard of that before. Uh, he gave, he's all three of these. He's a Sikh, he's a Hindu, and he's an Anglo. And he gave the benediction. He used the word peace a lot, but it was empty words, as Peter says in his letter. Empty words. A lot of peace, a lot of love. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked, for the unbeliever. You can say peace all you want, but unless peace comes from the Lord and from his words of eternal life, there's really no peace. It's a fake, false peace. So now, let's look at Jesus on, under this situation. Many of his disciples decided we're not following him anymore. So what's the first temptation? And we can ask this because the Bible clearly teaches us Jesus was tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. So might Jesus have been tempted to change the message, change the words, to make it more palatable, so that maybe less people would walk away? But then Jesus had to remind us, these words are not my own. They were given to me by my Father. And these words are spirit and they are life. So Jesus doesn't change the words and he doesn't make them more palatable. Second temptation, could Jesus have become extremely discouraged and down in the mouth because all these people walked away? You bet. In fact, in the uh, Psalms it's prophesied that there would be some that would reject him. And yet, and then, in the prophets, Old Testament prophets, it says, it's too small of a thing for you to be a savior for just the people of Israel. I'm going to make you a light for the Gentiles, so all the rest of the world. So Jesus did not become discouraged. He continued to faithfully carry out the preaching and the teaching and the rest of his work as our savior. And I can ask that about ourselves today. But, you know, before we do that, what did Isaiah prophesy would happen with Jesus? It would be despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. That was his lot as the Savior, despised and rejected by men. So when we see this example in Jesus, what should we do? Should we today change the message, make it a little more palatable so that people don't walk away from it? That's not what Jesus authorized us to do, is it? He, in fact, before he ascended into heaven, he says, teaching them everything I have commanded you, and blow on with you always, even to the very end of the age. And then and another temptation. Should we all get down in the mouth and discouraged because people aren't stomping down our doors? No. No. We are thankful for every lamb and soul under our care. And then thought us, there's a lot of other sheep who are not of this fold. Jesus is going to bring them to, and heaven's going to be filled. There's going to be a lot. So don't get down in the mouth, don't change the message. But rather, uh, we have an opportunity, like Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go to? You have the words of life eternal. In other words, like Joshua and the leaders of the Israelites back then who set the example and kept the Israelites faithful You and I have this opportunity in our own lives to have this personal confession like Joshua But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord That is very similar to what Peter says here We're not Joshua's not going to go away to other gods. He's going to serve the Lord and you and I today have this opportunity to set the example for those around us. And so we can, for those people in our families, and our relatives, and friends, and neighbors, and the like, set the example. There's no one else. There is no person else. There is nothing else we can go to except Jesus, who has the words of eternal life. And Jesus, when he finished carrying out his work, what did he do? He went and died for the sins of all. He went and died for the sins of the people that walked away from him at this point in time in John's Gospel and no longer followed him. He, he went and died for the sins of those who not only turned away from him, but those who may be tempted to change the message and maybe those who do. He went and died for the sins of those who get discouraged and down in the mouth when 
The Lord simply says, trust me with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And so in all these ways, uh, you and I, we have a loving Savior, paid for every one of our sins, and we have life in his name. Now, in the end, I think we're all going to be thankful when we get to heaven that there's not going to be any political conventions. And I think when we get to heaven, we're going to be very thankful that there's not going to be any political parties or political ads or political mailings or political uh, radio ads and all the mudslinging. That'll be gone. That'll be done. And thank God it will be. But in the meantime, you and I have a lot of opportunities. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of the eternal life. And so may we continue to share this, exhibit it, and let this shine out of our lives into the lives of many others. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now turn to the back of our worship bulletin, the back cover, and we join together in the hymn verse there. Peace.